one year or I think two years ago, I stumbled across a simple yet interesting study. Imagine a big white room, just like in uh, the Matrix. And there you have only one chair and one desk. On top of that desk you have a big button and when you press it, it gives you a safe electrical shock. What I mean by safe is that it's still very painful, but you're not dying out of this. The task was the person to stay there for 15 minutes in pure silence. The result? Well, most of the people were pressing that button. So they were willing to feel some sort of stimulation, even though it's pain, to just avoid boredom. If you watch this video, I'm sure you're overfed with so much productivity advice. Do this to be productive. Do that to avoid procrastination. Make a to-do list. And the list goes on and on and on. You may try lots of different productivity techniques. You try to apply good habits. And yet you fail to be consistent. Something is not purely changing within yourself. By seeing the title of this video, you may guess where I'm going with this. Before you and I dive deep into this topic, I would like to tell you a little bit of my story. I started self-development when I was 15 years old. It was way back in uh, 2013. Since then, I was filling up my mind with different productivity techniques and hacks and good habits and tracking and to-do lists and goals. But very soon I realized that I had to eliminate huge portions of distractions. And the biggest thing I eliminated was alcohol. Yeah, people joke that, oh, you quit alcohol at such a young age. Well, I saw a doc documentary about alcohol, I didn't see any benefits of it. So I decided from now on, no, not even ounce of alcohol will be in my body. Then, in uh, 2019, I had the opportunity to work in the US for the whole summer. At that point, I decided no more porn. Like, I'm not saying going to porn websites, I mean that as well, but also checking models on Instagram, on Facebook. I mean following them, like I just cut everything out because it's stupid. It doesn't give you much, it only takes it. It's really about like huge amounts of pleasure now, but it uh, rips off from your future. I will not go deep into it, because you already know. You should know, many people talked about it. Well, yeah, I just cut it out, that's all. 2020, I was still struggling with uh, craving video games. I was playing video games here and there. I could eliminate this once when I got a job as a hardware engineer. At that time, I didn't have the time to play video games. So it was gone by default. In 2021, I was struggling with eating. What I mean by this, when I was stressed, I was eating a lot. I was eating to the point where I could barely move. Yeah, that's how bad it was. I still could control it because I was tracking my weight. But sometimes, most of the time, I was just eating a little bit too much. In the same year, I discovered fasting. With fasting, I finally understood how my body works, how much food is enough, and what kind of food are making me feel good. 2022, I uh, finally moved into this apartment. I thought I was, how do you say, free from dopamine, right? But it was one last thing, which is this little guy, or the internet. The infinite entertainment you can get from this. From that time, I decided, okay, I could engage in scrolling, well, I can name it dump scrolling, or watching mindlessly content since 6 p.m., 6, 7 p.m. It gave my mind, it gave my mind no, no choice. You, I was either working or being bored. And I kept this habit for uh, more than one year. Last year, in November 2023, I was four months in as being a freelancer. I realized that something is off, something doesn't quite feel right. I was not making progress as I wanted to. I felt that I did not get all in to this. And here comes the one of the most profound changes 
that happened to me. I decided, okay, let's eliminate all dopamine activities, all the cheap dopamine activities, I would say. And from telling you my story, one thing that remained, I will show again, is uh, this little guy. So I decided I can do this dumb scrolling, watching content, watching movies, whatever. I am allowed to do this only on Sunday. The rest of the days, no. I was either working, eating, or being bored. That's all. And this amplified the biggest change in my life. To say that it was easy, it is to lie to you and myself. I was feeling like uh, a drug addict getting clean. It was frustrating, it was unusual, it felt that time slowed down a lot. However, the good news is that this only took two days. Two days and after that I started to feel more inspired, more willing to do the work, more inclined to do the work. You know this uh, quote when people say, you need a purpose, you need a passion, and you cannot wait to get up and just go for it. Well, this is possible when you eliminate most of the cheap dopamine. Because now your mind still craves dopamine and it will incline you to get from the more productive sources as working on something, building on something. So after introducing you to this topic of boredom, I want to tell you why it works, why it will solve most of your problems. See boredom as like resting between sets in a workout. When you are doing bench press, for example, you are doing till failure and then you cannot do any more. So what you are doing, you stop the movement and you wait till the blood flow will recover the muscles and you can do it again. Same thing applies to focused work. You do the work, you do mental work, and then you rest. And by resting I mean you are not stimulating your brain anymore. You're not scrolling, you're not checking news, you're not checking your email. You're literally, you just stop giving information to your brain to process. Boredom gives you the time and space to get inspiration, to get creative, to process things. Boredom allows you to filter the tasks you need to do. You see, we got so much used to get busy, to fill up our days with things. With boredom, you are allowed to identify, do I really need this thing to, do, to be done? Do I really need to do this? Most of the times it's not, and you will naturally be inclined to do more high leverage work. This is a big one. Boredom opens your mind to reality around you. Once you are engaged in reality, you start to thrive in this reality. Once you fully realize the current circumstances your life is in, you will naturally get more motivated to do things for your life to get better. Okay, I'm sure I'm not the only one who speaks about boredom. Yeah, boredom is good, blah blah blah, but how to embrace it, how to apply boredom to your life, how to make a natural part of your life. And this is what I will share with you. Before I show you the techniques you can apply to make boredom as a natural part of your life, I want to emphasize this one thing. None of this will work if you're not having a life vision, an ideal life's vision. What do I mean by this? Imagine your life 10 years, 15 years from now and try to picture the ideal life, the ideal version of yourself. How is your financial situation, your health situation, your spiritual situation, emotional, mental, relationships. Think about these things and make a vision. Again, this is another video in itself to show you how to make your vision of your life. I recommend to check this book. I think I'll attach a picture and the link in the description. It's named 12 weeks, 12 week goals, 12 week year. I think I, <laughs> I said it correctly. Why it's so crucial to have a vision is because you know, being boredom is not easy, it's not fun. You will have trouble to be consistent with uh, doing focused work, engage in boredom for long and long periods of time if you don't have a vision. Once you have a vision, it will remind you why you're doing these things, why you're working on your life, why you're improving, why you're keeping yourself out of cheap dopamine. You need to have this vision to constantly remind you why you're doing this. 
otherwise you will break out and return back to the comfort. Here are the ways you can implement boredom into your life. First, I will start with the morning and have a quiet morning routine. When I say quiet, I mean literally quiet. No listening to music, no listening to podcasts, even though you feel it's productive. No checking news, no checking email, nothing, none of this. You make the ordinary stuff, making your bed, brushing your teeth, having a breakfast, doing a, a light workout, whatever. You just woke up and give your mind and body to wake up fully. Once you do this in the morning, you will naturally, very fast, make boredom as a, something natural in, in your life. Like, yeah, you, you woke up and no stimulus. You, when you do this in the beginning of your day, it will be much easier to follow up through the rest of your day. This is one. Eat when you eat. This one is uh, crucial. I remember when I worked uh, at my last job, at the cafeteria I was seeing only two situations. One is people being in other group of people having lunch. Of course, it's where they were chatting, they were discussing things. It seemed fun. Second situation is people eating alone. And they are staring at the screen. I was struggling with this myself. I still am. But I want to make this clear. When you are eating and watching something, it doesn't mean you are like more productive. You're spending more activities to relax. See, you are dividing your attention. This willingness to multitask, this willingness to be everywhere gets you nowhere. I want to emphasize this. When you are eating and watching a YouTube video, for example, <laughs> just like this one, if you do, then uh, close this video and then return back after you finish eating. <laughs> when you eat, you focus a little bit of eating and then you switch your attention to the screen. You cannot, and I repeat, you cannot pay attention at two activities at a time. As I said, you're either watching or eating. You can watch consciously and unconsciously move your mouth and uh, digest the food and whatever. Or reverse, but you cannot do both consciously. The worst thing is to do both of them unconsciously, which you can. <laughs> you are eating anyways. This is a perfect opportunity to implement boredom into your life. Again, you are bored, you are eating, and some ideas may come up. Some realizations may come up. It's a useful way to spend time. Train when you train. When you work out, we like to listen to music. Especially if you go to the gym, they have shitty music. It's not only in my local gym, I see this <laughs> everywhere, people complaining. But try to not listen to music. Like, try to ignore the music from the gym and do the workout. Again, you are training yourself to give your full attention to one activity. Walk when you walk. I think you already noticed the pattern here. What I'm trying to tell you is to eliminate stimulation, eliminate checking phone, eliminate watching content. Once you are training yourself to give your full attention to one task, it will be more and more natural for you to focus, to give your full focus and how people say, to go all in to something more effortlessly because you are already getting used to it. Before you and I end this, I want to ask you, why boredom is hard? Or did you ask yourself why people avoid boredom? Why it's such a struggle? Why we have billionaires in today's world? They are humans like us. They also have access to the internet. They also have smartphones. And yet they are successful and yet they are doing productive work. Why, why is that? The answer for you may be shocking or may be already clear. Maybe you unconsciously knew this. But the problem is unprocessed emotions. Because of this, boredom seem harder than it should be. You know, you did not have a perfect childhood. I didn't have a perfect childhood. Most of the people didn't have a perfect childhood. And we got emotionally traumatized in one way or another. Some got worse, some got a little bit. Because of this, when you are alone, when you are in boredom, it gives you, it opens a window for your unconscious, for your body to present to you the thoughts, unpleasant thoughts unpleasant emotions. The, the stuff you don't want to feel, the stuff you don't want to think about. This is why people are inclined to escape. This is why people are like, they would rather, they would literally rather, they would literally rather sit all day watching YouTube 
mindlessly or playing video games mindlessly but to not encounter this. It goes back to the experiment I told you in the beginning about that button that gives you an electrical shock. P people are literally willing to feel that kind of pain than the emotional pain that they did not process. To tell you about how we get traumatized as kids it's uh, again another topic in itself. I'll give you an example. You are a little kid, you are seven years old, six years old and you may get into an innocent situation. You lost sight of your parents in the store and you have this fear that you are abandoned. We as kids we, we have a limited view of life so we literally believe that we are gonna die. That kid may develop trust issues or they will have uh, abandonment issues, you know, it will transfer into toxic relationships like uh, I guess you saw couples that they are sticking together all day every day because they are afraid to lose each other. From these kind of situations we get, uh, we get traumatized. So the solution, I'll give you a quick, quick solution, rather a roadmap around this. If you're a girl, again I'm not sure how many girls are watching uh, this video, let's say if you're a girl doing therapy helps, going to a psychotherapist really helps. Even talking with your family, with your friends, I mean women are doing are like that, they are doing it because it's encouraged and it really helps them. So if you're a girl just go for it, it will save you, not in terms of your life but in all the aspects of your life. For guys, well it's a little bit more complicated. I will divide in two micro situations. If you're a guy and you are, had a really fucked up upbringing, like it's like you got abused or bullied a lot, you have lots of lots of unprocessed emotions and you tend to do other activities that is harmful for you, like directly. I, uh, <laughs> I remember in 2008 it was like kind of a trend among teenagers, they were called uh, emo and uh, they had this tendency to cut themselves over here and they fall, they fell into this victim of oh poor me, life sucks and they they made it into a subculture like trying to make themselves look cool to get attention by showing how how hurt they are. If you really have so much negative energy stored into you, by all means go to a, ther a therapist, do psychotherapy, do meditation, whatever you can but spend your time to digest what is happening within you. However, in most cases, like I'm telling about 80% of cases, I mean guys don't need therapy, they need a purpose, they need a thing to strive for, a goal, a vision. You have to realize, you have to raise your awareness, try to sit down and think how your life would look like if you will keep spending living your life as you're living right now. Try to picture it in full detail, like 5 years, 10 years, 20 years from now, how your life will look like, not developing necessary skills, working at a low paying job. I'm not saying you are not able to provide for your family but you cannot even create your own family. Like this is how dangerous can become if you're not embracing boredom, if you're not working on your life with intention, like not having enough money, not having, uh, being constantly in worry, in stress and the more you are into this state the more you're willing to engage in cheap, cheap dopamine and more dangerous source of dopamine talking about alcohol, drugs, gambling. Once you really absorb that, like you uh, you see your life from a, from a distance and you realize how avoiding boredom ruins your life. This is the biggest regret a man can have being at their deathbed, realizing where all these years were spent, how fast life was and how unfulfilled they are. This is, this is serious, like uh, yeah I'm jokingly talking boredom, dopamine, yay. But, but in this digital age, literally, nobody is willing to do this, but you should. You have to. You have no other way. Again, I told you about the productivity hacks. It doesn't work. Why? Because your mind will always choose comfort. This is how we are designed as humans. This is our instincts. Living comfort, if we live in comfort, we spend less energy. If we spend less energy, we have our, we increase our chances of survival. Yes. This is working if you are an animal living in the wild where the, the nature is stimulating you to survive but now you don't have to do this. Instead of trying to survive, choose to thrive. I myself realized how crucial uh, boredom is uh, to implement into our life. 
I got to the point where I will choose to live a boring life, to do focused work, even if it doesn't bring me huge success as I want, I will still go that path. Because it's better to at least try, at least go somewhere, than to live in mediocrity, than to live a desperate life. And it reminds me of a quote from uh, 50 Cent, I think you know that guy. In 2005 he launched an album and it was named Get Rich or Die Trying. Literally, you, with boredom you have no other choice. You either work or you get bored. No other option. Before I end this, I want to tell you that uh, go step by step, right? Like, uh, for example, if you are really addicted to the phone, try to slowly limit your time on the day. Like, for example, you spend usually four hours, decrease it to three hours. Once it becomes more manageable, decrease it to one, decrease it to half an hour. Then you can uh, make it like, engaging in this cheap dopamine two, three times a week. Ideally, you should go to once a week, how I'm doing. Why once a week? Why totally not eliminating? Well, again, it's a digital age and uh, you will build a temptation. And once you restrict yourself so much and then you engage again, it will do more harm than good. Like you will overdo it. And this is like fasting for your brain. When you will practice it, when you will engage with it, you will see that uh, you reach a point where you get, you lose interest. Enough is enough. It's like you fill your stomach to 80% and you literally can predict if you can, if you keep eating, you will feel way, way worse. Same will apply with uh, dump scrolling. Like you, you will dump scroll, dump scroll, dump scroll, and then you'll reach a point where, okay, I think I gotta stop. Now it's, it's not fun anymore. And this is ideal. Once you get to this point, then bro, pff, a very good life awaits you. All right, message me if you have any questions. I'm sure that uh, the problems I encounter are not the others you may encounter. It's free, I have uh, nothing to sell. I'm really curious to see how you are struggling, what is your fear or what, what are your challenges. Maybe the challenge is to establish a vision, maybe the challenge is to get rid of porn or alcohol, I, I don't know. So message me, you can uh, text me on Instagram or Twitter. Again, the links are below. Thanks for watching and uh, see you on the next video. Have a productive day.